One of the ink pairings that really caught my attention when I was reviewing the cards from Ursula's Return was Amber Ruby. While this deck has traditionally been played as a Mufasa deck with 60 characters, I do think that this ink pairing can finally branch out and establish some new identity, and it does look to be pretty strong. Uh, I'm not going to cover every little piece of tech in this deck, I'll save that for the deck profile, but what you're going to see is a couple of matches against uh, some meta decks, and we did go 6-0 with this deck, so it, it overperformed in my opinion and it worked really well. What's nice about it is between the Mulan, the Mother Gothel, and the Beast, that's 12 different characters on the Ruby side that you're able to play that come into play with damage. And then on the Amber side, between the Snow White, the new Madrigal, and the Rapunzel, you have basically 12 cards that heal those damages off of your characters, of which eight of, of, of them will draw you cards. Now here you can see my opponent is on double brawl and double lucky diamond. When you play Ruby Sapphire, this is what happens. You're going to end up with those high cost cards. That's why you're so focused on ramping. And a deck like this can really take advantage of control decks because while you still have that identity of being a bit of a mid-range deck where you're able to establish very nicely on curve, you know, one drops, two drops, three drops, four drops, etc., you're also replacing your hand when you heal up those damaged characters. If I'm able to drop that Madrigal or the Rapunzel and get, you know, a heal off, I not only get the card draw from the Amber cards, but I get an overstatted body that has its damage removed for the, the, the turn that I played it, right? So this Mulan on one, being a 2-3 body, does represent something that could be difficult for the opponent to remove. Here you see, again, given the opponent's awkward hand, they're kind of forced to just get some interactions in and slow me down a little bit. But between establishing a decent sized board, unless the opponent can absolutely just board wipe me, um, I'm also gonna be able to draw cards. And here you can see the very strong interaction between Mother Gothel and Rapunzel now. Loading up my hand and putting down four questing power on board for next turn, the opponent is not going to have a be prepared. They're not going to have the Sisu wipe, and so we're we're essentially going to seven lore next turn while still maintaining a pretty strong and healthy hand. And despite the opponent being on Sapphire, they haven't really ramped too far ahead. And keep in mind that we were also on the draw in this match. Now another thing I want to address here is you can see in my hand I drew into the new aerial, uh, that's the four cost inkable card that is a three three body, but also has Singer 7. The new card in, um, I think it's called Look at This Family, where you're able to scry, I don't even remember how many, five or seven cards deep, and take two characters from that scry two, uh, or scry five, let's just call it a scry five, I don't remember exactly what it was. But getting two cards off of that for singing it with one character in the aerial is pretty good value. And not only that, of course, the OG song that was seven cost in the first chapter on the Ruby side is Be Prepared, which can also be sung by that aerial if you're in a bit of a difficult situation and you need to wipe the board. Um, here you can see some additional card draw with the Surfer Stitch. And unless the opponent has a Be Prepared, this is pretty much game on board. There's not much that they can do. Um, and even if they do Be Prepared, they're on four cards in hand. We have a hand of six while we have a board of five. They do indeed have the Be Prepared, so they slow us down a little bit. But they have zero lore. We have 13. They were on the play. We were on the draw. We have control of tempo, right, because the Be Prepared spent their turn. And we have follow-up plays. And because we're on Ruby, we have some of the strongest top end in the game. We're sitting on double Medusa, double Brawl, and a Maleficent Dragon. And I didn't actually realize it kind of in the moment, but like I could be inking these Brawl since I have Brawl in character form in the in the Madame Medusa, right? So uh, definitely be aware of that. You do play a lot of that kind of removal, mainly because you want to out critical threats early on, things like the Emerald Diablo and Dece uh, Ursula Deceiver of All, Hiram's as you saw me do in this match, and just critical early game pieces that a lot of the meta decks need to use in order to um, establish their game plan. So the Brawl is a really key piece that made Ruby a lot more effective for a lot of decks or a lot of ink pairings in my opinion and you can see the effectiveness here. Now I am playing Simba because with playing the two cost Snow White you just know I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of the Snow White and you know shout outs to Joshua winning um, Atlanta the first Lorcana challenge in North America for showing that that reanimator strategy from Amber is actually really really strong you know it's some validation for me because I was a huge fan of seeing that Perdita come down and just getting all of that advantage right bringing back a followers bringing back a Cinderella for exertion bringing back the Cusco and Snow White in this deck can essentially do the same thing and so we're playing the um, Simba 
is basically an, an interruption that acts as if I quest with my Snow White, the shift one, the big one, the Well-Wisher, I'm able to get back a Simba, probably play it in Bodyguard mode and just recycle that over and over again for protection. Um, the opponent does drop a Sisu and it does clear out my board a little bit, but again, we had the top end Maleficent Dragon waiting and the opponent ends up scooping it up. The next deck we're going to take a look at facing here is Amber Emerald, and I do think that this deck will show up to a certain degree in the metagame since the Amber side did get some interesting new discard um, cards that synergize well with the emerald cards and they naturally play into an aggro strategy kind of like what you saw in the first chapter where i think this was basically one of the first hyper aggro decks that you saw in the game so between those two strategies i do think that this deck has enough to be a bit of a meta contender but it definitely has a lot of weak matchups especially against good players who will know how to play around the discard and if we've seen anything from the amber side again with the snow whites and or perditas you definitely can play around discard because you can play off the top you can draw cards off the amber cards healing like i mentioned in the first match there and between the overstatted bodies that you put on field and outing your opponent's understatted bodies, things like that Daisy Duck they just inked there, the Flynn Rider, these are understatted bodies for their cost. My Mulan is a one cost character, that's a two, three body. Your Flynn Rider is a two cost character, that's a one, two body. Like my Mulan will eat your Flynn Rider for lunch. Um, yes, my Mulan has damage on it, but if I heal it up, then it's just like I said in the first match, that overstatted body that's hard to deal with. So we're gonna be able to maintain board presence. Yes, we'll lose some cards in hand from discard, but as long as we maintain those Rapunzel draw engines we should be a-ok -okay, and or the snow white engine whichever one we get online first so depending on the matchup you can play it differently you saw how we played against the mass removal of be prepared right having that healthy hand being able to re-establish a board state after getting our board wipe from sisu and be prepared versus discard where we may value um, developing some of those high toughness characters that can survive on board now in this particular instance i did make a misplay and i didn't realize it until after the fact because i was not playing around a double discard if the opponent had a you have forgotten me or in this case um, a daisy duck and or a sung sudden chill or being able to sing Sun and Chill, I would lose the Rapunzel in my hand. If they had both, then it didn't matter in the end anyways. Thankfully, they didn't have either one and were only able to discard one card. I am able to top deck some ink and drop this Rapunzel, which instantly draws me three. And against discard, a Rapunzel, I don't want to say represents a win condition, but like I have three cards in hand, you have three cards in hand, and I have the way stronger field at this mo moment in time. And so you're gonna see me just wipe out the Ursula here. They have a, a lowly Daisy Duck and I have five questing power on board with a decent hand that can follow up and likely remove what the opponent continues to play and or try to do in terms of questing power. So the Amber deck or the Amber cards allow you a lot of versatility, in my opinion, in being able to adapt to certain strategies, at least the two stronger strategies in the metagame right now, in my opinion, in the Ruby removal and the Emerald discard that you're seeing uh, kind of run rampant. Now, my opponent plays a Crikey here, which boosts up their Daisy Duck. And this is a great card for Emerald, especially, like I said, offsetting some of that understated, uh, understated strength that you have on the emerald side um, but them not doing anything with that daisy duck was kind of questionable thankfully the bare necessities does reveal that they have that new emerald song that would basically wipe out my board put all four of my cards at the bottom of my deck since they're all two strength or less so we have to put that or, or rip that out of the opponent's hand and leave them with the um a song that they can still sing with both of their characters but it will cost them the exertion of both in order to play it but it will get them two characters to hand so yeah they play the um, look at this family i believe it's called i play it myself i don't even remember the name um but they're going to be able to get two characters off this and maintaining all five of their ink there will means that will mean that they can play out one or both of those characters so they grab a daisy duck and they grab a chernabog and again we're not threatened by the Chernabog because we play Ruby, so all it takes is for us to draw a, like a Maleficent Dragon, uh, be prepared, etc., and we can wipe it out. Now I have an interesting decision here on this Daisy Duck. I opt to discard the Surfer Stitch, which you can say is questionable because that does represent a draw two, but I thought to myself, I'm likely gonna draw an Inkable since again, I'll cover the deck profile in a different video, but we only play like nine on Inkables, I think. And so the odds I was gonna draw an Inkable was pretty high, I thought, and I'm like, this Medusa represents a play next turn, whereas the, the Stitch is still two turns away, and the odds I keep the Stitch and it's not discarded is pretty low. So I'm just gonna play out my hand here, and this is the end result. We have a massive board state, the opponent can't answer it. They Even if they drew that Emerald Song again, they don't have enough to double sing it. Um, I'm going to be able to quest for, I don't even know, like, what, six next turn. Um, the Chernabog is not online necessarily. I 
think they could probably play it with their ink and what's in the discard pile by now but it would represent their whole turn and unless they can out multiple characters of mine they're not going to be able to um, slow me down fast enough before I'm able to quest for game. So they go for this aerial, clearly digging for the out, um, most likely that uh, Emerald Song that will just put the cards on the bottom of my deck, um, but I don't think they found it there. The game like disconnected, I didn't see what song they took, if they even took one. Um, the Daisy Duck will crash into the Simba, um, because again, Simba, you have to take it out. We topped like a Brawl, which is actually pretty good in this scenario, to take out their aerial. And again, put them on. You can't sing your way out of this situation. We take out the Daisy Duck with the Medusa and then quest for four going to 14. On the Amber and Emerald Ink pairing, there isn't much that they can do to deal with this board state, right? Um, they don't play rush characters. Their removal options are fairly limited. I think actually they're they're forced to use hard cast um, the Bruno song, we don't talk about Bruno, in order to out my Rapunzel to force it back to my hand and force me to discard it. So that takes up their whole turn, um, and I'm still going to be able to quest for three next turn, plus play out my top deck most likely. So the opponent is in, in a difficult spot for sure. They ink the song that they took off Ariel, I believe, there, and then we draw a Mother Gothel. We quest with everything, just drop the Mother Gothel, and again, the opponent doesn't even have anything, because even if they drew that Emerald Song, assuming they could even play it, the Mother Gothel would stay on board, which means I quest for game next turn anyways. And I think the opponent is just going to just play out some cards and then scoop it up, and we're going to be moving on to the last match. If you made it this far in the video so far, and you enjoy this deck and some of the commentary that we've been making over it, make sure you drop a like. Um, but I'll, I'll include the last match to show off the singing part of the deck, which we haven't even run into yet. But this is just another option that you can use for the deck. So we're finally going to be on the play. And our opening hand here looks fairly decent um, because we do have a one drop, a two drop song in the Bare Necessities and a Brawl that we can use. We put back some of our on Inkables and higher cost cards and we draw into Inkables, which is always nice. So we're going to, of course, start off by inking the card that we're not going to be playing for nine turns in the Maleficent Dragon and dropping a Mulan. The opponent inks a Fishbone and plays a Develop Your Brain. So again, leaving the field open for me to start aggressively questing with these overstated bodies and hopefully being able to draw into some of my healing um, characters so that I can uh, quest with them more safely, quest with my Ruby cards more safely. So the Bare Necessities reveals a couple of cards on my opponent's end and the Flynn Rider and the One Jump Ahead are their turn two plays. So I leave them with the One Jump and take the Fishbone Quill because my thought process there is I'm not going to automate that play for you. Uh, I'd rather you play the One Jump actually and not play the um, Flynn Rider right now. So I'm going to take your Fishbone Quill since I know that you inked one already. Putting it, putting you on, it's a little bit harder for you to consistently ramp. We do indeed draw the Snow White there, which is going to heal up the Mulan, and that's kind of nice. But we are kind of lacking in card advantage, but this is where that Ariel and that Song in my hand um, is going to be able to give me a little bit of card advantage in the following couple of turns. So the opponent is on the Ursula's Trickery, which is kind of interesting. This card basically just represents deck thinning, right? Um, I'm not going to discard any cards because obviously I don't have too many cards to discard and they're all very valuable to me right now. Unfortunate that we drew the Rapunzel in this situation. So here you can kind of see where it might be a bit of a conflict. You know, not, if I didn't heal with the Snow White, I would have been able to heal with that top deck Rapunzel and draw two. But it's totally fine because we're still going to be able to drop this aerial and we're going to be able to sing the Look at This Family song with just that aerial and get two cards to hand anyway. So the, the card advantage is still there and we have a Singer 7 on board which is pretty strong. The opponent eventually gets their items online so if they see a hero they're going to be in really good shape. And they've dropped this Genie and this Sisu and the Genie is most likely a shift target but they do quest with it. So again, I'm going to look to probably slow them down the best I can because I have those overstated bodies that can survive those challenges. So off the look at this family, I'm probably going to take the Isabel for sure, yep, and the Simba there and put the rest at the bottom. We don't need to be prepared, um, so losing that at the bottom is fine. And I do think I was on like three or four in this build. The Brawl represents great value here though, taking out that Sisu, preventing them from getting the ability to be able to scry two and pick up one of those cards. And then we're gonna take out the Genie to prevent the shift like I mentioned if the opponent ended up drawing into that. We ink the Mulan and drop the Simba. And this Isabel represents card draw during the next turn. The opponent is on five ink. I think they're gonna take some time to think here, but we are 
pressuring five lore on board basically and if we top deck the snow white shift it's going to be like off to the races because this ink pairing which again props to the opponent for trying out something new that isn't usually played um, they don't really have an answer directly besides running over the bodyguard and the snow white in order to out the snow white yes they can bruno out the snow white and force the discard but that's not really the best option when my amber cards are drawing me cards. You're not really going to keep me on zero cards if I'm being able if I'm able to play around that Bruno action. So the Inca Flynn Rider and play a Diablo, play another Popsicle, and they're down to two cards in hand. Um, we're going to be able to drop this Isabel and draw a card before the Diablo activates by being exerted. We draw into a Snow White, and we're just going to probably drop that um, and heal up our field even more. And we're just putting too much questing pressure on board for this opponent, and I think they just kind of seen enough and end up scooping it up because the Diablo just doesn't represent anything at this point in the game. So on screen here is the deck list. I will do a separate video where I cover this deck a little bit more in depth, but as you saw from this gameplay, it worked fairly well, um, similar to what Joshua's deck was able to do on the draw going second. Um, this deck, I think, or just Amber in general, is decent at going second, especially when you can generate advantage and um, kind of claw back some of that tempo. Uh, I talked about this before in other videos, right? Like a card like Be Prepared, a card like A Whole New World, etc. Our potential tempo resetting cards. Well, Amber, just the additional advantage you're able to generate with some of these cards when played the right way can also do that. So yeah, stay tuned for the deck profile if you're interested. It probably will come out first for members and then shortly after for the public. So again, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, you're a real one for sure. Thank you again for watching though. Quantum is out.